Hatha Yoga is a branch of yoga, one of the six schools of Hinduism. The word Hatha literally means force and thus alludes to a system of physical techniques. In India, Hatha Yoga is associated in popular tradition with the yogis of the Natha Sampradaya through its mythical founder Matsendranath. Matsendranath, also known as Mananath or Manapa in Tibet, is celebrated as a saint in both Buddhist and Hindu Tantric and Hatha Yoga schools. However, James Mallinson associates Hatha Yoga with the Dashanami Sampradaya and the mystical figure of Dattatriya. According to the Dattatriya Yoga Sastra, there are two forms of Hatha Yoga, one practiced by Yajñavakya consisting of the eight limbs of Ashtanga Yoga and another practiced by Kapila consisting of eight mudras. Currently, the oldest dated text to describe Hatha Yoga, the 11th century CE Amrasiddhi, comes from a Tantric Buddhist milieu. The oldest texts to use the actual verbiage of Hatha are also Vajrayana Buddhist. In the 20th century, Hatha Yoga, particularly asanas, the physical postures, became popular throughout the world as a form of physical exercise, and is now colloquially termed simply as yoga. Topic <inaudible> Origins. Topic <inaudible> <inaudible> Earliest textual references. According to Mallinson, some Hatha Yoga techniques can be traced back at least to the 1st century CE, in texts such as the Sanskrit epics Hinduism and the Pali Canon Buddhism. The Pali Canon contains three passages in which the Buddha describes pressing the tongue against the palate for the purposes of controlling hunger or the mind, depending on the passage. However, there is no mention of the tongue being inserted into the Nisafarinx as in true Kakari Mudra. The Buddha used a posture where pressure is put on the perineum with the heel, similar to modern postures used to stimulate kundalini. According to Birch, the earliest mentions of hatha yoga specifically are also from Buddhist texts, mainly tantric works from the 8th century onwards, such as Pundarika's Vimalaprabha commentary on the Kalachakratantra. In this text, hatha yoga is defined within the context of tantric sexual ritual. When the undying moment does not arise because the breath is unrestrained even, when the image is seen by means of withdrawal and the other auxiliaries of yoga, i.e. dhyana, pranayama, dharana, anasmirti and samadhi, then, having forcefully made the breath flow in the central channel through the practice of nada, which is about to be explained, the yogi should attain the undying moment by restraining the bindu of the bodhicitta i.e. semen in the vajra i.e. penis when it is in the lotus of wisdom i.e. vagina while the actual means of practice are not specified the forcing of the breath into the central channel and the restraining of bindu are central features of later hatha yoga practice texts topic <inaudible> <inaudible> medieval systematization in medieval times teachings on yoga were systematized in several texts the Amrasiddhi, which dates to the 11th century CE, teaches Mahabandha, Mahamudra, and Mahavada. The Dattatreya Yogasastra, probably composed in the 13th century CE, teaches an eightfold yoga identical with Patanali's eight limbs that it attributes to Yajnavakya and others as well as eight mudras that it says were undertaken by the Rishi Kapila and other Rishis. The Dattatreya Yogasastra teaches Mahamudra, Mahabandha, Kekaramudra, Jalandarabandha, Udayanabandha, Mulabandha, Viparadikarani, Vairoli, Amaroli, and Sahajali. The Sarngadharapadati is an anthology of verses on a wide range of subjects compiled in 1363 CE, which in its description of Hatha Yoga includes the Dattatreya Yogasastra's teachings on five mudras. The Vivekamartanda, which is contemporaneous with the Dattatreya Yogasastra, teaches Nabhomudra i.e. Kekaramudra, Mahamudra, Viparatakarani and the three bandhas. The Goraksasataka, which is also contemporaneous with the Dattatreya Yogasastra, teaches Saktakalanamudra along with the three bandhas. The Kekaradiya teaches only the method of Kekaramudra. The methods of the Amrasiddhi, Dattatreya Yogasastra and Vivekamartanda are used to raise and conserve bindu semen, and in women rajas, menstrual fluid which was seen as the physical essence of life that was constantly dripping down from the head and being lost. These techniques sought to either physically reverse this process by headstand postures like the Viparadikarani or to use the breath to force bindu upwards through the central channel. Other texts like the Vivekamartanda, Goraksasataka and Kekaridya also teach the raising of Kundalini. 
The aims of these practices were siddhis supernormal powers such as levitation and mukti liberation. .The only other texts older than the Hatha Pradipak to teach Hatha Yoga – Mudras are the Shiva Samhita, Yogabhija, Amaraprabhada, and Sarngadharapadati. Classical Hatha Yoga Hatha Pradipak The Hatha Pradipika, also called Hatha Yoga Pradipika, is an important and one of the most influential texts of the Hatha Yoga. It was compiled by Svatmarama in the 15th century CE from earlier Hatha Yoga texts. These earlier texts were a Vedanta or non-dual Shaiva orientation. From both, the Hatha Pradipak borrowed non-duality philosophies. According to James Mallinson, this reliance on non-dualism helped Hatha Yoga thrive in the medieval period as non-dualism became the dominant soteriological method in scholarly religious discourse in India. Hatha Yoga Pradipika lists 35 great yoga siddhas starting with Adi Natha Hindu god Shiva followed by Matsendranath and Gorakshanath. It includes information about shatkarma six acts of self-purification, fifteen asana postures, seated, laying down, and non-seated, pranayama breathing, and kumbhaka breath retention, mudras internalized energetic practices, meditation, chakras centers of energy, kundalini, nadanusandana concentration on inner sound, and other topics. Hatha Yoga Pradipika is the best known and most widely used Hatha Yoga text. It consists of 389 slokas verses in four chapters. Chapter 1 with 67 verses deals with setting the proper environment for yoga, ethical duties of a yogi, and asanas postures. Chapter 2 with 78 verses deals with the pranayama breathing exercises, control of vital energy within and the satkarmani body cleansing. Chapter 3 with 130 verses discusses the mudras and their benefits. Chapter 4 with 114 verses deals with meditation and samadhi as a journey of personal spiritual growth. Post-Hatha Pradipika texts Post-Hatha Pradipika texts on Hatha Yoga include Amarasasana, a Sharada script manuscript of this Hatha Yoga text was copied in 1525 CE. It is notable because fragments of this manuscript have also been found near Kuka in Xinjiang, China. The text discusses Kekaramudra, but calls it Saranas. Hatha Ratnavali, a 17th-century text that states Hatha Yoga consists of ten mudras, eight cleansing methods, nine kumbhakas and eighty-four asanas compared to fifteen asanas of Hatha Pradipak. The text is also notable for dropping the Natanusandana inner sound technique. Hatha Pradipika Siddhantamuktavali, an early 18th century text that expands on Hatha Pradipika by adding practical insights and citations to other Indian texts on yoga. Garanda Samhita, a 17th or 18th century text that presents Hatha Yoga as Goddess the Yoga, according to Malinson. It presents six cleansing methods, 32 asanas, 25 mudras, and 10 pranayamas. It is one of the most encyclopedic texts on Hatha Yoga. Jagpradipaka, an 18th-century Braj language text that presents Hatha Yoga simply as Yoga, composed by Ramanandi Jayadarama. It presents six cleansing methods, 84 asanas, 24 mudras and 8 kumbhakas. Topic. Modern era Historically, Hatha Yoga has been a broad movement across the Indian traditions, openly available to anyone. Hatha yoga, like other methods of yoga, can be practiced by all, regardless of sex, caste, class, or creed. Many texts explicitly state that it is practice alone that leads to success. Sectarian affiliation and philosophical inclination are of no importance. The texts of Hatha yoga, with some exceptions, do not include teachings on metaphysics or sex-specific practices. According to Mallinson, the Hatha Yoga represented a trend towards the democratization of yoga insights and religion similar to the Bhakti movement. It eliminated the need for either ascetic renunciation or priestly intermediaries, ritual paraphernalia and sectarian initiations. This led to its broad historic popularity in India. 
Later in the 20th century, states Mallinson, this disconnect of Hatha Yoga from religious aspects and the democratic access of Hatha Yoga enabled it to spread worldwide. Between the 17th and 19th century, however, the various urban Hindu and Muslim elites and ruling classes viewed yogis with derision. They were persecuted during the rule of Aurangzeb, who ended a long period of religious tolerance that had defined the rule of his predecessors beginning with Akbar, who famously studied with the yogis and other mystics. Hatha Yoga remained popular in rural India. Negative impression for the Hatha Yogis continued during the British colonial rule era. According to Mark Singleton, this historical negativity and colonial antipathy likely motivated Swami Vivekananda to make an emphatic distinction between merely physical exercises of Hatha Yoga and the higher spiritual path of Raja Yoga. This common disdain by the officials and intellectuals slowed the study and adoption of Hatha Yoga. Modern Hatha Yoga, of the type seen in the West, has been greatly influenced by the school of Tirumalai Krishnamacharya, who taught from 1924 until his death in 1989. Among his students prominent in popularizing yoga in the West were K. Patabi Joys famous for popularizing the vigorous Ashtanga Vinyasa yoga style, B.K.S. Iyengar who emphasized alignment and the use of props, Indra Devi and Krishnamacharya's son T.K.V. Desikachar. Another well-known school of Hatha Yoga in the 20th century has been the Divine Life Society founded by Swami Sivananda of Rishikesh and his many disciples including, among others, Swami Vishnu Devananda founder of International Sivananda Yoga Vedanta Centers, Swami Satyananda, of the Bihar School of Yoga, and Swami Satchidananda of Integral Yoga. After about 1975, yoga techniques have become increasingly popular globally, in both developed and developing countries. The Bihar School of Yoga has been one of the largest Hatha Yoga teacher training centers in India but is little known in Europe and the Americas. In the West, Krishnamacharya-linked schools have been more widely known. Examples of other branded forms of yoga, with some controversies, that contain Hatha Yoga methodologies include Anusara Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga, Bikram Yoga, Integral Yoga, Iyengar Yoga, Javanmukti Yoga, Kundalini Yoga, Kripalu Yoga, Kriya Yoga, Siddha Yoga, Vinayoga, Vinyasa Yoga and White Lotus Yoga. Practice Hatha yoga practice has many elements, both behavioral and of practice. The Hatha yoga texts state that a successful yogi has certain characteristics. Section 1.16 of the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, for example, states these characteristics to be utsaha enthusiasm, fortitude, sahasa courage, darya patience, jnana tattva essence for knowledge, nishkaya resolve, determination, and tyaga solitude, renunciation. In the Western culture, Hatha Yoga is typically understood as asanas and it can be practiced as such. In the Indian and Tibetan traditions, Hatha Yoga is much more. It extends well beyond being a sophisticated physical exercise system and integrates ideas of ethics, diet, cleansing, pranayama, breathing exercises, meditation and a system for spiritual development of the yogi. Topic: <laughs> Proper diet. The Hatha Yoga texts place major emphasis on mitahara, which connotes measured diet or moderate eating. For example, sections 1.58 to 1.63 and 2.14 of the Hatha Yoga Pradipika and sections 5.16 to 5.32 of Garanda Samhita discuss the importance of proper diet to the body. They link the food one eats and one's eating habits to balancing the body and to gaining most benefits from the practice of Hatha Yoga. Eating, states Garanda Samhita, is a form of a devotional act to the temple of body, as if one is expressing affection for the gods. Similarly, sections 3.20 and 5.25 of the Shiva Samhita text on Hatha Yoga includes Mitahara as an essential part of a Hatha Yoga holistic practice. Brahmakari Mitahari Tyagi Yoga Parayana Abdidardvam Bhavitsado Natra Karya Vicharana Abrakmachari, practicing Mitahara moderate diet and Tyaga renunciation, solitude, devoted to yoga achieves success in his inquiry and effort within half a year. Verses 1.57 through 1.63 of the critical edition of Hatha Yoga Pradipika suggests that taste cravings should not drive one's eating habits, rather the best diet is one that is tasty, nutritious and likable as well as sufficient to meet the needs of one's body and for one's inner self. 
It recommends that one must eat only when one feels hungry and neither overeat nor eat to completely fill the capacity of one's stomach, rather leave a quarter portion empty and fill three quarters with quality food and fresh water. According to another Hatha Yoga classic Gorakshasataka, eating a controlled diet is one of the three important parts of a complete and successful practice. The text does not provide details or recipes. The text states, according to Malinson, food should be unctuous and sweet. One must not overeat and stop when still a bit hungry leave a quarter of the stomach empty, and whatever one eats should aim to please the Shiva. Topic. Proper body cleansing Hatha Yoga teaches various steps of inner body cleansing with consultations of one's yoga teacher. Its texts vary in specifics and number of cleansing methods, ranging from simple hygiene practices to the peculiar exercises such as reversing seminal fluid flow. The most common list is called Shat Karmani, or six cleansing actions, Dati cleanse teeth and body, Vasti cleanse bladder, Neti cleanse nasal passages, Trataka cleanse eyes, Nauli abdominal massage, and Kapala body cleanse phlegm. The actual procedure for cleansing varies by the Hatha Yoga text, with some suggesting water wash and others describing the use of cleansing aids such as cloth. Topic. Proper breathing Pranayama is made out of two Sanskrit words prana, prana breath, vital energy, life force and ayama, ayama restraining, extending, stretching. Some Hatha Yoga texts teach breath exercises but do not refer to it as pranayama. For example, Garanda Samhita in section 3.55 calls it Gaudavistha state of being the pot. In others, the term Kumbhaka or Prana Samrata replaces Pranayama. Regardless of the nomenclature, proper breathing and the use of breathing techniques during a posture is a mainstay of Hatha Yoga. Its texts state that proper breathing exercises cleanses and balances the body. Pranayama is one of the core practices of Hatha Yoga, found in its major texts as one of the limbs regardless of whether the total number of limbs taught are four or more. It is the practice of consciously regulating breath, inhalation and exhalation, a concept shared with all schools of yoga. This is done in several ways, inhaling and then suspending exhalation for a period, exhaling and then suspending inhalation for a period, slowing the inhalation and exhalation, consciously changing the time, length of breath, deep, short breathing, combining these with certain focused muscle exercises. Pranayama or proper breathing is an integral part of asanas. According to section 1.38 of Hatha Yoga Pradipka, Siddhasana is the most suitable and easiest posture to learn breathing exercises. The different Hatha Yoga texts discuss pranayama in various ways. For example, Hatha Yoga Pradipka in section 2.71 explains it as a threefold practice: rikaka (exhalation), puraka (inhalation), and kumbhaka (retention). During the exhalation and inhalation, the text states that three things move, air, prana and yogi's thoughts, and all three are intimately connected. It is kumbhaka where stillness and dissolution emerges. The text divides kumbhaka into two kinds, sahitha supported and kavala complete. Sahitha kumbhaka is further sub-divided into two types, retention with inhalation, retention with exhalation. Each of these breath units are then combined in different permutations, time lengths, posture and targeted muscle exercises in the belief that these aerate and assist blood flow to targeted regions of the body. Topic. Proper postures Before starting yoga practice, state the Hatha Yoga texts, the yogi must establish a suitable place for the yoga practice. This place is away from all distractions, preferably a mathika hermitage that is distant from falling rocks, fire and a damp shifting surface. Once a peaceful stable location has been set, the yogi begins the posture exercises called asanas. These hatha yoga postures come in numerous forms. For a beginner yogi, states Mircea Iliadi, these asanas are uncomfortable, typically difficult, cause the body shakes and typically unbearable to hold for extended periods of time. However, with repetition and persistence, as the muscle tone improves, the effort reduces and posture improves. According to the Hatha Yoga texts, each posture becomes perfect when the effort disappears. One no longer thinks about the posture and one's body position, breathes normally per pranayama, and is able to dwell in one's meditation The asanas discussed in different Hatha Yoga texts vary significantly. 
Unlike ancient yoga texts of Buddhism, Hinduism and Jainism, it is the Hatha yoga texts that provide step-by-step -step methodology on how to enter into an asana. The Hindu text Garanda Samhita, for example, in section 2.8 describes the Padmasana for meditation. Most asanas are inspired by nature, such as a form of union with symmetric, harmonious flowing shapes of animals, birds or plants. Topic. Kundalini in later Hatha Yoga Early Hatha Yoga was used to prevent the dripping of bindu semen from the heads of men. The two early Hatha Yoga techniques were to stand on one's head or make breath flow into the center channel which forces bindu up. However, in later Hatha Yoga, the Kala visualization of Kundalini rising through a system of chakras is overlaid onto the earlier bindu-oriented system. The aim was to access amra the nectar of immortality situated in the head, which subsequently floods the body. This goal is in contradiction with the early Hatha Yoga goal of preserving bindu. Topic. Meditation The Hatha Yoga Pradipika text dedicates almost a third of its verses to meditation. Similarly, other major texts of Hatha Yoga such as Shiva Samhita and Garanda Samhita discuss meditation. In all three texts, meditation is the ultimate goal of all the preparatory cleansing, asanas, pranayama and other steps. The aim of this meditation is to realize not a Brahman, or the complete absorption and union with the Brahman through inner mystic sound. According to Guy Beck, a professor of religious studies known for his studies on yoga and music, a Hatha yogi in this stage of practice seeks inner union of physical opposites into an inner state of samadhi that is described by Hatha yoga texts in terms of divine sounds, and as a union with not a Brahman in musical literature of ancient India. Topic. Goals The aims of Hatha Yoga in various Indian traditions have been the same as those of other varieties of yoga. These include physical siddhas special powers, bodily benefits such as slowing age effects, magical powers and spiritual liberation moksha, mukti. According to Mikhail Burley, some of the siddhas are symbolic references to the cherished soteriological goals of Indian religions. For example, the Vayu Siddhi or Conquest of the air literally implies rising into the air as in levitation, but it likely has a symbolic meaning of a state of consciousness into a vast ocean of space or voidness. Ideas found respectively in Hinduism and Buddhism, some traditions such as the Kala Tantric sect of Hinduism and Sahajiya Tantric sect of Buddhism pursued more esoteric goals such as alchemy Nagarjuna, Karpita, magic, Kalavankana cheating death, and Parakayapravesa entering another's body. James Mallinson, however, disagrees and suggests that such fringe practices are far removed from the mainstream yoga's goal as meditation-driven means to liberation in Indian religions. The majority of historic Hatha Yoga texts do not give any importance to Siddhas. The mainstream practice considered the pursuit of magical powers as a distraction or hindrance to Hatha Yoga's ultimate aim of spiritual liberation, self-knowledge or release from rebirth that the Indian traditions call mukti or moksha. The goals of Hatha Yoga, in its earliest texts, were linked to mumukshu, seeker of liberation, moksha. The later texts added and experimented with the goals of bubukshu, seeker of enjoyment, boga. Topic. Differences from Patanjali Yoga Hatha Yoga is a branch of yoga. It shares numerous ideas and doctrines with other forms of yoga, such as the more ancient yoga system taught by Patanjali. The differences are in the addition of some aspects, and different emphasis on other aspects. For example, pranayama is crucial in all yogas, but it is the mainstay of Hatha Yoga. Mudras and certain kundalini-related ideas are included in Hatha Yoga, but not mentioned in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Patanjali Yoga considers asanas important but dwells less on various asanas than the Hatha Yoga texts. In contrast, the Hatha Yoga texts consider meditation as important but dwell less on meditation methodology than Patanjali Yoga. The Hatha Yoga texts acknowledge and refer to Patanjali Yoga, attesting to the latter's antiquity. However, this acknowledgement is essentially only in passing, as they offer no serious commentary or exposition of Patanjali's system. This suggests that Hatha Yoga developed as a branch of the more ancient yoga. According to P. V. 
Kane, Patanjali Yoga concentrates more on the yoga of the mind, while Hatha Yoga focuses on body and health. Some Hindu texts do not recognize this distinction. For example, the Yogatattva Upanishad teaches a system that includes all aspects of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, and all additional elements of Hatha Yoga practice. Impact The impact of Hatha Yoga on physical and mental health has been a topic of systematic studies. Some scholars state that a regular and proper yoga practice yields health benefits. Others state that the results of these studies have been mixed and inconclusive, with cancer studies suggesting none to unclear effectiveness, and others suggesting yoga may reduce risk factors and aid in a patient's psychological healing process. Yoga's combined focus on mindfulness, breathing, and physical movements bring health benefits with regular participation. Yoga participants report better sleep, increased energy levels and muscle tone, relief from muscle pain and stiffness, improved circulation and overall better general health. The breathing aspect of yoga can benefit heart rate and blood pressure. The 2012 Yoga in America survey conducted by Harris Interactive on behalf of Yoga Journal shows that the number of adult practitioners in the US is 20.4 million or 8.7%. The survey reported that 44% of those not practicing yoga said they are interested in trying it. Topic. See also Kriya Yoga Kundalini Yoga Raja Yoga Yoga Sutras of Patanjali Hatha Yoga Pradipika Topic. Notes Topic References Topic Bibliography Topic External Links Yoga Technique in the Great Epic, E. Washburn Hopkins, Journal of the American Oriental Society, nineteen oh one On the Meaning of Yoga, K's Joshi, Philosophy East and West, nineteen sixty five Indian Spirituality in the West, A Bibliographical Mapping, Robert A. McDermott, Philosophy East and West 1975. Yoga as Spiritual but Not Religious, A Pragmatic Perspective, Peter H. Van Ness, American Journal of Theology and Philosophy 1999.